Hey everyone, I'm Tony Marfield with Microtech. We are on location at the Bradford facility and I have Ed Severson from Bowler and I have Mark Tabula from uh, Microtech here. He's been with us for 15 years um, heading up our, our grinding and heat treat department. Today we're going to take you in an in-depth look on how we heat treat our blades. This facility has been here since 2005 so we've been at the same location for 20 solid years even though part of our proportion or our, our manufacturing is made in North Carolina you know, the, uh, the Bradford PA plant is a main artery to what we do. So we just wanted to share that a little bit. Ed uh, uh, Severson is a degreed metallurgical engineer from Bowler Udelholm. We're very, very happy to work with Bowler out of Austria. You know, we uh, get sourced all our M390 and M390 MK. So Ed's here to verify, like I said, he's been here, uh, I think two years ago, mm -hmm. uh, to verify that our processes were the right way to do this. Even though that our heat treat is going to change here in the next couple months because of new equipment that's coming in, we're going to take you in an in-depth look at what we do here at Microtech. Hello, I'm here at Microtech Knives. My name is Mark DeBola. I'm here with Ed from Bowler. Um, he's going to explain some of the information that we have to do with heat treat. About materials in general, um, the, the information that Mark gets in order to do proper heat treat comes from us directly. And you're going to see it in our data sheets. And what that is, is we take our materials and we will heat treat them. We'll do all the heat treat parameters. We'll do material testing. Uh, we'll basically do a whole map of how that material behaves. And in the, in the, in the instance of M3, M390MK, which they use here, um, that is going to come from us and it's going to be something that Mark uses as a recipe. What is the importance of heat treat and M390? Yeah, what we give um, Microtech is a material that has a capability that capability is going to come from good heat treatment. So the important part is to have a good process and also to be consistent so that you get a consistent result every time you heat treat. Well, hello guys, this is the heat treat room. Please come in. This is where we prep all our blades. Uh, we put them in stacks of 20 to 10s uh, and then we bag them in double wrap double wrap material. What we're going to do right now is follow the blades through the heat treat process. Once the blades are in the stainless steel foil, ready to be hardened, they're going to be taken to the hardening furnace. This is your high temperature furnace that is, that is going to make the material ready to heat treat, ready to quench. It's an important part of the process and it's one that's controlled with ele electronics and controllers. And once that's done, once it's ready to be quenched, we're going to move to the quenching side of the, of the process. So the blades will be taken out of the stainless steel foil. They'll be put onto this quench table. And what's critical about quenching is getting heat out as fast as humanly possible. That's why you have a fan, you've got a blower system, and you're exiting the heat as fast as humanly possible. Once the, the, the initial quench is cooled, the blades are ready to be touched as far as you can handle them. They'll go into initial temper stage. These are temper furnaces where the blades are gonna go and get one initial temper, so that you can set the material properties where you want them to be. Once they're out of this process, the first temper, they'll go into the liquid nitrogen. And what that does is you're trying to take the material down as low as possible to make sure there's full transformation of the product from where it was initially to a fully hardened structure. Once this process is done through the liquid nitrogen, it will again go on the quench table get cooled down and do another one or two tempers depending on what you want to have for a finished hardness and properties. Oh, I'd like to show you how to make a stainless steel bag for heat treat process and put the blades inside. So you do, you got to open the bag so you don't cut yourself, wide in the base so it has a nice opening inside. No holes around the edges. Make sure it's nice and tight and sealed. Then you take blades and very carefully without cutting yourself, you slide your hand in and make sure you have enough space. You can see inside that there's still room. So you wanna fill as much available space as you can inside the bag. So I have a nice row all the way across, no space that the blades can warp or move around. And I'm gonna, because this bag's large enough, I can go one more stack higher. So I will go up. And 
And that's going to be it for that bag. And seal, what we do is that. The biggest goal is to get all the air out so you have no oxygen in the bag to cause debris or make it go, make it burn. If the oxygen gets in the bag, it could ruin the blade by alternizing it wrong and cause it to burn. So you have to seal the bag very well. When you're done, it's ready for the oven. So the foil that Mark's using to do heat treat, this is stainless steel high temperature foil. The reason you use this type of foil is that at high heat it doesn't degrade and it forms an airtight package that they can put the blades in. So when they seal this bag up, it keeps the blades and the blade material from being exposed to high temperature at an, at an atmosphere that would cause a lot of scaling and a lot of issues that, that you don't want to deal with. So that's the whole purpose behind having a bag of stainless steel foil and having it sealed to the air. As you can see, we have some bags pre-made as uh, me and Ed showed you how we make them. I'm going to start loading them into the oven. We preheat our ovens at 1100 degrees, so it's already a little up and it slows down the process. Well, speeds up the process and we can get them in to a hot oven already. So right there is the oven. You can see it's warm and we start loading blades in. Grab another one and put it right in front of it as well. And then we can shut the door. After we shut the door, we seal it. And then we can go up on the degree. They have to change it to 2100 degrees because that is what we alternate our blades at. Alternizing is 30 minutes long. One question you may have is, where does Mark get the temperatures to put the materials in? Well, every material that's out there, regardless of who makes it, has a heat treat recipe. And that's typically found in the data sheets, which we'll show you in, in, in the video itself. Those temperatures are set by the material and the times so that you can get the optimum performance and properties out of the materials. So right now, what you're gonna see Mark do is he's, he's gonna take the blades out of the hardening furnace. What's happened now is the blades have been put in at a high temperature, they've been held for a specific amount of time, and now he's gonna pull them out and get them to quench. Mark? Our oven is at 2100 degrees right now for a half hour. We're about to remove the blades out of the oven. Okay, so now the blades have come out of quench, they've been put on the quench table, and now they've cooled to where they're, they're hot enough that you can hold them in your hands. And that means that they're ready to go into temper. So what you're gonna see Mark do is put the last of the product into the baskets so that they can go into the temper furnace and get a good temper. Now we're gonna do a temper of 400 degrees for two hours. So during the heat treat operation and through the different processes, the Rockwell hardness tester is going to tell you and guide you as to how you're doing in the process. So what Mark's going to do right now is he's going to check the Rockwell after first temper, and that's going to give us an idea of how consistent the process is going. Rockwell should range between 59 to 62 RC.
perfect. 60.6. We normally do about 10% of each lot, so we know we're accurate, and then we divide it to make sure they're all consistent. That is a good rock wall. So this process will be repeated through the other tempers and it's going to guide us as to whether or not it can have a consistent process. We're prepping the blades to go into liquid nitrogen. First we'll put them in the freezer for an hour to chill and then we'll put them into liquid nitrogen after that. Uh, we put them in the freezer at first and last so we don't stress them out and crack the material. You want to space them out a little bit so you know the liquid nitrogen is getting in between each plane. Now we'll put them in the freezer for an hour so they can chill, and then they'll go in the liquid nitrogen after that. During the heat treat process, specifically after quench and during the tempers, the material is going to go through a metallurgical change in structure to basically the hardened structure of the material. That transformation is, is somewhat sluggish when you get to really high alloy materials. So Microtech utilizes a two-stage freezing process between the first and second temper. The first one is just a, free, a, a freezer right here, then it's going to go into liquid nitrogen. The first freeze is essentially to get the material less of a thermal shock than when it goes into this process. And what this process will do is it's going to take the material down to extremely low temperatures, but also ensure that you're getting full transformation to hardened structure, giving you a good consistent product. Now that they were in the freezer for an hour, we're going to put them in liquid nitrogen for two hours. always want to use a pair of liquid nitrogen gloves. Make sure the blades are submerged in the liquid. You want to be about to double the pipe over the blades because it will evaporate. Now that the blades have been in the liquid nitrogen for two hours, we're going to pull them and we're going to put them in a freezer for an hour to let them slowly get up to room temperature. After that hour, we'll pull them and put them on the cooling fan so they can go in the last temper after that. Now that the blades have been in the freezer for an hour, we're gonna take them out of the freezer and put them on the cooling rack till they're room temperature and put them in the last temper. Now that you can see the blades are turning white, frosty, then we're gonna let them sit here till they're room temperature and we can put them in the last temper. Now that we pulled blades out of liquid nitrogen and now let them sit on the cooling rack to cool, we are gonna put them in the last temper. This is the last and final temper for two hours. After this, they are complete and they should rock well between 59 to 62. First off, I'd like to thank Tony and the group at Microtech for letting us to come down here and support them and, and back them up on their heat treat operation and, and the materials. Uh, it's been a great day. I hope you guys saw a lot of uh, detail as to what they're doing. 
Uh, this process is important, the heat treat process, just as much as the material is. It's, it's all consistency. It's all getting the most you can out of the product that we can supply. So thanks to Tony and the group. And again, our special uh, thanks to Ed and um, uh, the folks at Bowler who backed this up 1 million percent. You know, and I wanted to thank our uh, employees here at Microtech, also within the North Carolina and Bradford operations. You know, these folks have done an unbelievable job, you know, building this brand. You know, trust me when I say, uh, stay tuned for a lot of really new, neat developments going into the processing facility in North Carolina, which includes modern, uh, more modern heat treating equipment. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for the next uh, episodes of the videos and you take care and we'll see you soon. Hey everyone, we hope you enjoyed our video on the tutorial of the heat treating of the birth of the blade. So, hey, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about, uh, you know, our our steel. You know, we've been using the Bowler products for quite a few years now, and of course, everybody knows, I mean, we use it pretty much exclusively. Uh, we, do, we do a couple of different other alloys from time to time. Um, you know, throughout the years, we've used them all. But uh, we're, we, we've been extremely pleased with the Bowler Oodle Home products, and uh, we're especially proud of the M390MK. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, is that some kind of special steel? It's not. You know, it's like anything else, you know, any of the mills uh, that are out there, you know, have a formula that they use as a chemical composition that makes up the dynamics of their steels. And they have a tolerance range. Some of them have a top and a bottom. Some of them hit in the middle, some towards the bottom. I won't mention names. And then some of them uh, take strives to hit towards the top. You know, we buy uh, such large quantities of this material. We buy entire heat runs at a time, you know, from the factory. And you know, just talking and having good communications with the engineers there, they're like, is there anything that we could do better? And it's like, I don't know if you could do anything better than the fact that maybe you could tighten your tolerance on the composition. And they're like, you know what? Nobody's ever asked us to do that. We can. So the idea is it's a tighter tolerance. We hold them to, a, uh, uh, you know, outside of the normal specifications, of specif you know, for specs. It's like, let's just say gauge pins, you know, you have plus or minus 10 thousandths, you have plus or minus one thou, and then you have plus or minus two tenths. So we held them to a very, very fine bar at the very upper end of the quality level of the steel, you know, and that's just to get the chemical composition uh, uh, almost exact. So what that does for us is in our processing, it just gives us a better ability uh, to follow their directions on how to heat treat this material properly. Cause that's at the end of the game, you know, uh, at the end of the day, that's, you know, that's, that's when the blade becomes alive. So, you know, when you get variations in these chemical compositions, your heat treat specifications could lightly, slightly change uh, to get the uh, end uh, desired results. So with a tighter composition, it gives us exacting you know, almost exacting processing that we follow. And again, we don't have any secret uh, heat treat processes or anything along the lines. We're following the manufacturer's suggested guidelines. And then once we get those tweaked, we're following our SOPs to the T. That's why it was kind of nice to have uh, Ed Severson come in you know, he came in a couple of years ago to look over our process to make sure that we're doing it exactly as they specified. And of course, uh, you know, came in again to do the video. And in the future here, uh, again, we're going to continue to do our um, heat treating in-house because we can control it. And, uh, but we're going to be doing it a little bit differently, you know, and that's another video segment that we're going to share with you down the line. But uh, again, M390MK is not a specialized steel. It's just a tighter tolerance M390, which all of us agree that it's absolutely phenomenal material and we just wanted to hold it to a tighter spec. So it's like making a recipe or, you know, being in the kitchen, you know, you, you, you make a sauce or you make a dish and you follow exact proportions of different ingredients. It's no different with the composition of these steels. So we just wanted to have the amounts to be to a tighter, tighter tolerance, which we thoroughly enjoy, which gives you a more consistent product on the line, you know, so we hope you've enjoyed the video and definitely stay tuned for more videos on the birth of the blade.